Okey-doke. What's up, love? Are you having trouble? These stockings, just look at that. Oh, I should take them back to the shop right away. I know all about shops, I do. <gasps> Where's that flaming paper, boy? The one night when there's so much interest in the paper and he's missing. What do you mean? And you heard, we're in it tonight. Where have you been all day? Oh, you didn't see the paper, boy. I want to know what's on the town pictures. You'll find out more than that when you get the paper over, isn't it, tonight? What? Where have you been? I've had a clue. Oh, there's a queue here. Yeah, love, here's yours. Oh, here's your fitness. Oh, give over. I won't start for threatening. Oh, <laughs> Let's see. Big jewel robbery. That's not it. More trouble for the north. Here it is. Is that it? No, I think it's detected on about coal again. Oh, look, there it is. There's his picture. All right, there's no need to shout down the hero. I can hear you. Ex-student slams neighbours. Well, is that all it is? That little bit? Well, if they're going to get it all in about me, they'll have to serialise it, won't they? Dear <laughs> <laughs> oh, love. I'll make it half past five, Jack. Uh, oh, no, don't bother. I'll go. Oh. Now, don't read that now, love. Finish your stacking first. You can read the paper on. I thought you said there was no time for paper. Mm, I said not for you there wasn't. In any case, I'm only glancing at the gardening notes. Well, see if they can recommend out for a two-foot window box with note in it but soot. There you are. You might as well have it. It's marrows today. Hey. Hey, the dead legs. Went down four three and they were winning two notes at half time. How very interesting. Oh. Hey, this chap's a spitting image. Boy, oh, come it is him. Who? Kenneth Barlow. Oh, and the writing about him and all. What's he doing in the papers? Why, is it... Nothing happened to the lad, is there? Not yet, it hasn't. Just listen to this. Ex-student slams neighbours. Kenneth Barlow, 24-year-old schoolmaster of 3 Coronation Street, jeered at the simple pleasures of his only neighbours in a scathing 2,000-word attack in the left-wing political review survival. Summing up the attitude... Summing up the attitude of the people he lives and works among, Barlow described them as lazy-minded, politically ignorant, starved of a real culture, and stubbornly prejudiced against any advance in human insight and scientific progress. Oh, come, there's some fancy words there, but it's strong stuff, there's no doubt about that. Well, it doesn't apply to us, Jack, and I'm sure he never intended it to. We're, we're neighbours of his, aren't we? I love that there are neighbours and neighbours. Now, Kenneth Barlow is a very nice class of boy, and I shouldn't be surprised if there isn't a great deal of truth in what he says. A great deal. Hmm, left wing, eh? Must say I'm surprised at that. Uh, how'd they go on then, Jack? Oh, went down, poor three. Hey, there's someone else in paper. Right. Just listen to this. This'll pin your ears back for you. Ex-student slams me. Neighbor. We've had them pinned back. Oh, uh, we have not one. You've read it then? No, oh, you're yeah. son a million others. Hey, I hadn't thought about that. He always was a clever boy. It don't sound too clever, if you ask me. You know, I don't know much about it, but I reckon we could take him to court for that. There's one thing I'd like to do, take him outside and beat the living ruddy daylights out of him. You know what would have happened in the old days, don't it? He would have been tarred and feathered, hey, no question. Oh. I should think so, indeed. I'm surprised that you... Well, good heavens above. Hey, have you seen this, Albert? You're a pal of his, aren't you? Well, just because I'm a pal of his, it doesn't mean I agree with everything he says. But I haven't said I don't mind. How do you mean, Albert? Well, what I mean is, when you're young, you have ideas. I did myself once, Harry. Yeah, it's funny flaming ideas, if you like. You've heard this bit here. Now, look, Len. It's no secret, believe me, Albert. While the British Empire bursts open at the seams, the young people collect in shadowy coffee bars to discuss the latest discs. The middle-aged are hunched complacently over their television sets, and the elderly sit, half-starved and shivering, in damp terrace boxes. So the inhabitants of my area face up to the challenge of what could well be the twilight of the human race. I'd like to let a bit of blinking twilight into him. I'm not kidding you. He hasn't pulled any punches, has he? No, and neither will I, either. Good evening. Hello, hello, hello Martha. Love. Hey, have you seen this? Do you feel like a, a new age pauper who gets their sustenance, not from food, but from beer? I beg your pardon? Here, take it home and read it, and when you've read it, burn it. Give us a couple of pints, oh. Jack. When I think of that young sword, so who's still wet behind the flaming ears, you know, it... Uh. Hey, who's he talking about? You live round here, don't you? Of course I do. He's talking about you, then. Well, the cheeky young devil. Just you wait till I tell Ina. Well, 
Oh, that evening paper, then. Aye, and you can keep your hands off it, lad. I haven't read it myself yet, and I don't want it wetting through, either. <clears throat> hey, hang on a minute, lad. How do you expect me to get my tackle out? Oh, don't tell me you're having a shave. Well, why not? There'll be a job less to do in the morning. Now, come on, move yourself over, lad. Come on, Ken, get a move on. Book your ideas up, lad, while I get myself lathered. Could be yesterday's or tomorrow's. Well, it's neither, lad. It's, it's today's. And uh, just you leave it where it is. Look, and don't leave all that water running away. Come on, Ken, get a move on, lad. Look, if you get your nose stuck in this paper, I shall be waiting for that mirror all night. Funny name, you know that, for a magazine. Uh, survival. Yeah. Hey, I better book up my bath again, Carl. Where are you going somewhere, then? Yeah, I'll... Oh, I with. Nobody will know. Hmm. I wish you'd mentioned something about it before, lad. What? Oh, you mean the article? Well, you know it is. I didn't want to say anything in case it didn't come off. I didn't want everyone round here to know about it. Well, I'll keep my mouth shut, lad. I promise you that. Oh, you know I didn't mean that. They might ask me to follow it up with another article. Oh, I don't know about that, lad. I should tread carefully if I were you, Ken. We don't want to get everyone's back up, you oh, know. Dad, I've already told you. Nobody round here is going to read a magazine like Survival. Oh, hey, come on with that mirror. <sighs> hey, what's that stuff, Ken, lad? Have to shave. Want to try it? <laughs> Not likely. Here, uh, how much do you say they paid you for that? 35 guineas. Ah, oh, well, that's better than their punch on the snout, isn't it? It's not just the money, Dad. Oh, damn, I've nicked myself. Oh. Dad, could you bring the evening paper back with you? I want to read it in the bath. Well, he's always been very polite to me, which is more than I can say for some people. You're not sticking up for him, are you? Well, I'm not saying that, but I'm not running him down, either. I shouldn't be surprised if there isn't a great deal of truth in that article. Annie, that's not the point. Well, what is the point, in? A fat lot of good you've ever done for the starving people of Asia, I yeah. must say. You're always too busy looking after your own comfort. Yes, me young Lord Bell, I want some of those fancy flaming ideas knocking out of his head. That's my opinion, for what it's worth. Now, look, you don't want to take it so seriously, Len. It's not but a nine days wonder. And besides, he hasn't had the experience in life that we've had. Look, he's over 21, isn't he? He ought to be able to face up to his responsibilities. I've had enough of this debate. It's getting a bit too hot for me. Oh, well, he's made us a right laughing stock around here anyway. I don't think he likes us. Have you ever noticed the way he smiles and narrows his eyes? Yeah, it's the kind of a bloke he is. He's got no time for himself, never mind other people. Frank, Ken, anybody at home? Oh, there you are, Albert. Come on up, lad. Oh, blast. I'm still bleeding like a pig. Oh, <coughs> oh you've, uh, you've seen it then? Hey, seen what? Hey, I'll give it a bit of that paper with you, Albert. Uh, ah, thanks, Len. Wait, wait, where's Ken? Ken is here in Batland. Oh, uh, hello, Ken, lad. I'm sorry, I, di I didn't see you. It's all right, Mr. Tatlock. I'm not shy. Here, uh, Len will ask me that I read some of it. <laughs> oh yes, hey, well, come on, let's get let's get this door closed, shall we? This lad's gonna get his dead. Look. Well, the tad just did not came to me. Uh... Hey, here what? You haven't read it then? No. Well, I'm that's not. what I've been trying to tell you. Oh. It, it's about these articles that your Ken's been writing. Oh. What the heck? And no, I wanted to tell you before anybody else did. Oh, that stupid young idiot. Look, how did this get in here? Oh, well, it's not Ken's fault, then. You know what newspapers are like when it comes to making things up. If you no collapse tomorrow, the regulars would still gather in the local pubs, swill beer, throw darts and discuss the usual topics. The quality of the bitter, the prospect for the 315 and the latest scandal from their own little corner of our smouldering national compost heap. But then, look, everyone's going to see this, you know, it'll be in all papers. I suppose he calls this giving us a pat on the back. Yes, well, that and the lad has gone a little bit far, Frank, but you know you've got to keep a sense of proportion. Nay, Albert, don't tell me you believe in this muck. Oh, I don't rightly know. I know when I was his age, I thought pretty much the same way. <laughs> I used to blast at the bosses all the time. Mind you, I was very careful who were listening. They're going to change this tube before I finish with it. Now, look, Frank. Frank, go easy with that meddling young... Oh, well, 
I suppose it'll come all right, it was. You've done it. You've done it, haven't you? You've done it this time, haven't you? You've got stuck or something? Go on, look. Go on, look, 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 read it. You wrote it. Well, really well read it. What's he on about? This is what I'm on about. Well, perhaps you just give it to me. I'll find out. I hope you realise what harm you've done. It's not going to be easy to live this lot down, you know. I don't want a silly muck about the neighbours. I thought you said they weren't going to get the chance to read what you wrote. Well, you've gone and done it this time, haven't you? Look, Dad, I'm just as surprised as you are. I never knew the papers to get hold of it. They've twisted everything anyway. You're doing me a lot of harm in this street. You know that, don't you? Can you talk me that other towel over, Dad? Now, what harm am I doing you? I'll tell you what harm you're doing. You're putting the old neighbours up against me. That's oh, what look, you're doing. Dad, I never intended this to get in the paper. I wrote a serious article for a serious magazine about something I believed in. And it's not my fault if some lousy evening paper goes and twists the facts. I, I just don't understand your attitude. Well, I just don't. I'm trying to explain if you'll only listen. You're wasting your time. Yes, I think I am wasting my time. That's what I'm on about. I'm on your side, but you can't see it. Neither can they. A flaming funny way I have of showing it. Look, Dad, it's not just Coronation Street. It's the same everywhere. Nobody cares. Take this town. Look at that skyscraper going up in Donkin Street. Two million quid's worth of glass palace. I... And the universe have been struggling for years to raise a few thousand for a new physics Look, lab. I know all about they give that. give you a few pretty toys like cars and dishwashers and tellies and take away everything that's worth living for. Oh, well, they can shut the rep and, and turn it into a rat and all because the council wouldn't fork out a mouldy thousand quid. It's the same in Bessie Street. That place was condemned before the war. And the last time anyone can remember having a new coat of paint was when some stupid nick came down from the ministry. And nobody gets up and shouts about it. Why? Because they're all too busy watching the telly and filling the football pool. Get what I mean? Credit me with some sense, won't you? Of course I know what you mean. But I still tell you what, consider the feelings of only decent people before, before you start dragging the nose in, in the dirt. Oh, Just about finished listening to you. Your mother and me slaved all our lives to keep you at school. Not that I'm minding that, mind you. But look what, it's well all wasted. Look, yeah, you get a decent job and you don't hold it for five minutes. What happens? You chuck it away. And a job with promotion and prospects too. For what? Just so you can go and be a schoolmaster, trying to dinner a lot of uh, brains into a lot of snotty nose and Now, look, Dad. Look, I, I may not be very brainy, lad, but at least I've got my feet on the earth. Yes, I'll give you that. Look where it's got you. Ah, and you be careful what you're saying. Look, the only type of books you ever read are cheap westerns from the library. And the only recreation you get is jugging up at the rovers, moaning about the weather and churning over the local gossip with the rest of the old women in the street. I suppose you call that living it up. Now, just a minute, now, just a minute. Look, if you're going to start oh, getting... Oh, let's forget it. Chop me tie over with Forget it. Who started this? Forget it. After what you just said to me, now you're going to listen to me for a change. I've got something to tell you, lad. Look, I've lived the best part of my life on a street like this, and I've always been able to hold my head up, and I've always been respected, what's more. And during the last war, I served four years in the army. That's right. Go on. Have a good laugh. Go on. Your war has got nothing to do with it. Just, just let me finish, will you? Look, I don't profess to be brainy or out like that, but I've always believed in an old-fashioned sense of loyalty. Oh, I know it's not supposed to be very popular these days, but it's lasted me for a long time and I'm too old to change now. There's no wrong, you know, in being loyal to your own class. Oh, Dad, for heaven's sake, as if I'm not. Look, all right, you stick to your opinions and I'll stick to mine, OK? No, I'm going out. And I'm going to tell you something, too. Whilst you're under my roof, I don't want to hear those articles mentioned again. And if they should ask you to write any more, you're going to refuse point blank. Now, you listen to me. If that magazine wants any more articles from me, they'll get them. And if you and Coronation Street don't like it, you know what the answer is. Oh, I'm sorry, Frank. I, I thought he was still upstairs. Oh, that's all right, Albert. I, I'll just tell him a few home truths. Oh, well, I'll just pop round for row, because it, it's pretty hot in there. I shouldn't bother going round tonight if I were you. <laughs> That's just Kenneth Barlow's opinion. Who's going to take any notice of a young nit like that? No, yeah, but it's down here in black and white. You can't ignore it, can you? What he says here amounts to calling us a shower of ignorant yobs, doesn't it? And I don't stand that from anybody. Yeah, there's not much we can do about it, though, unless one of us writes to the paper. Ah, what good would that do? Any young juggins who's been to university, paid for by you and me, mind you, they take notice of him. Oh, but no, not us, no. We're not civilised. We haven't lived yet. Well, look, would you like to go into right. the snug, Mrs Longhurst, to bring in your usual? Oh, I'd rather have it in here, if you don't mind. I won't be in the way up there, will I? No, of course not. Hello, Hello. 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 Yeah. That's not a bad idea, writing your papers. They might shove it in if it was signed by everybody involved. Well, it might be worth trying. At least there'd be no harm in it, would there? Hey, have you got a piece of paper, Jack? Well, I haven't got anything decent. No, oh, it doesn't matter. It's in the loop. Hey, but, uh, 
There's a price list here. You yeah. can scribble on the back of that. Yeah. Hey, don't take any notice of them squiggles. It's just on his arithmetic. Right, well, it's just for roughing it out, like. Uh, dear sir, uh, my attention has been drawn... Oh, no, that won't do. Have you ever heard such a fuss about nothing? I know. I wish Harry wasn't so fussed about it. Well, I've read some of it, and I don't intend to read any more. Do you know what I think, Conceptor? No. I think it's all miles above the heads. As far as I'm concerned, Kenneth's a very nice boy, even if he has got a serious sort of disposition. Uh, dear sir... Here, I'll send some, then. Dear sir, I would like to reply to the allegations... Uh, uh, make that monstrous allegations, oh, that's eh? better. Monstrous allegations contained in the article by Kenneth Barlow, which in our considered opinion amounted to a, lo a load of flaming piffle. What do you mean, a load of flaming piffle? Oh, tear it up, Harry. Throw it away. What's the good? Ah, get all the paper. Read it out to me, will you, lad? I've forgotten how it goes. If I've got to read any more of that trash, I might do something I'm sorry for, believe me. Well, can you make him see sense, Mr. Tuttle? You see what I mean, don't you? It's always his father that's got to see sense. Well, now where are you going? I'm going down to Rovers to swill beer and listen to local gossip. That's if you've got no objections. No, no, I shouldn't think that if I were you. Not tonight at any road. Here, I'll tell you what, we'll go around at Flying Horse. No one's going to stop me going to the Rovers tonight or any other night. Nobody's trying to stop you, Frank. It's only I didn't think you wanted to be mixed up in any unpleasantness. Look, are you coming or aren't you? I am coming. Anyone at all? Oh, it's you, Mr. Turner. Come in. I don't really want to stop. I just popped round to let you know how things were. Look, Ken, they're all on about that article you wrote. Yes, I know. So they tell me. What are they saying about well, it? Well, some of the things I wouldn't like to repeat, but I gather they're not all that keen. What do you think about it? Oh, me. I never believe out of reading the papers, except me stars. I don't really believe in them either. I just like to know what, uh, what's going on round the corner. If you really want to know, I think it was very well written. And I think you're going to be famous one of these days. Look, love. Don't you take any notice of anything that lot say. They're just jealous, that's all. I just came round to tell you because... Well, you know what Len Fairclough's like when he's had one or two. I don't want to think I committed a crime. I thought there was supposed to be free speech in this country. There's nothing free in this world, love, and don't I know it. <laughs> Ta-ra. Ta hey, why don't you try your hand at one of them love stories? Something oh. romantic. I'm sure you could. You must have had experience. A nice-looking fellow like you, you know. <laughs> Look, um, if I see anybody, I'll say that you were sorry and that it's all a mistake and um, you didn't think they'd take it personally. No, I'm afraid you can't say that, Mrs. Turner, because I'm not sorry at all. In fact, I've never done anything in my life I'm less sorry for. Look, you've only got to say it, you dope. You don't have to mean it. I'm sorry, I couldn't do that. Thanks for coming, anyway. Suit yourself. Cheerio, Kim. Cheerio. Oh, hello, then. A bit parky tonight, isn't it? Well, it's bright for tonight, then. Any coming out? I, I don't get you. Don't give us that. You know what I'm talking about. The angry young man. Where is he? Hiding up the wall, isn't it? Well, I don't know, do I? I'm, oh, I'm not his you. keeper. Shall I tell you where he is? He's up in your house, isn't he? Hiding behind the door. I'll tell you one thing about your son, Frank Barlow. He might be a walking flaming dictionary, but he hasn't got the guts of a louse. No, look here. It's all right, Albert. I can handle this. What's the matter? I'm the old... No, excuse me. But... Would you mind repeating what you just said? I don't think I caught you the first time. I said your son hasn't got the guts of a louse. Well, I'm not going to stand here and have my own family insulted to be patient. They're insulted? I like that. Have you seen the evening paper tonight? Yes, I've seen it. Then you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Look, I've got nothing against you, Frank, but I don't like being insulted either. I don't worry about your likes and your dislikes. All I want is an apology for what you've just said. Now, look, I think you've both got things out of proportion. What are you talking about, an apology? What are you on about? You'll get no apology out of me if you stand there till next Christmas, Oh, mate. we'll see about that, won't we? Oh, you're gonna see about yes, that? Right. Then what are you gonna do about it, then? Jack! Well, come uh, on! Can you come and give us hands for a minute? That's standing Frank out here. You're gonna have a bundle if we don't stop them. Oh, oh dear, surely they're not going to have a fight outside my front door. Come That's the one thing I won't stand for. Come and have a look, Mrs. Walker's I face. will not. It's very common. Well, Henry, you can get in the human. Well, that's what I'm telling you, Henry. Oh, Jimmy, shoot his gun up again. You better watch it, mate. Come on, if you want to finish it. Come on, come on. Stop it, Frank. Stop it. You're too old for this sort of lark. One of these days, someone's going to cut that loud mouth of your down to size. Oh, let somebody else do it. You don't want to get that nice coast of yours, Mucky, do you? Now, come on inside and have a drink. Shake hands on it. Come on. Oh, will you come on inside? We'll have one before we go to the flicks. Just watch it, You'll watch it yourself. Why do you have to say that? We'll leave for the pictures of the day. Oh, we'll only miss the news, look. Come on, Frank. Hey, what's that beside you? 
bed while I was in the toilet. Have I missed so much? Oh, Ian will never forgive me. You were better off where you were, love. It were all over before it started. There you are, Elsie. Now then, what is it, Alex? Oh, a couple of pints, please, Jack. Whatever you have in yourself. Oh, and one of those green things with the cherry in for conceptor. Oh, we're lashing out tonight, aren't we? I suppose the peace offering, because we're going to be late for the pictures. Ah, well, I don't think we'll be going. Not tonight, love. I'd better stay and keep my eye on oh, this Oh, Harry. Right. Well, it's a good job I came along when I did. You're uh, half killed, poor Frank. I never touched him, mate. Only roughed him up a bit. He started shooting his mouth off and I lost me rag, that's all. Oh, he mugs away, eh? Yeah. Oh, I feel sorry for old Frank, you know. He's had no but a load of trouble with that lad of his ever since his missus copped it. That's right, lad. Now, then, you sit down and, and I'll make you a cup of tea, eh? Oh, that's all right, Albert. Uh, don't bother yourself, lad, thanks. <laughs> it's no bother. I'll just go and put kettle on. Hey, I wonder where your Ken's got to. <laughs> I don't know. He's gone for a stroll or something, communing with himself. <laughs> hey, Albert. What? I wonder what it must be like, you know, to be... To, to be, be really... To be what? To be really brainy. <laughs> Bit of headache sometimes, I should think. <laughs> What's been going on? Now, to my knowledge... Ken, would you like your cup of tea while I'm making it? You look white. Look, Dad, if it's anything to do with me, I've a right to know. What's been happening, Mr. Tetlock? Hey, you better ask your dad, Ken. Well, come on, are you going to tell me? Oh, it were now, laddie. I just had a bit of a Barney Will Fair club outside Rovers, that's all. Over me, I suppose. Well, I... No way, yes, but it wasn't nothing much. It was more of an argument than anything else. Well, go on, tell me what about, as if I didn't know. No, it, it weren't really your fault, Ken. Hey, where are you off to? I'm going round to the Rovers. If anyone round there has got anything to say about me or what I do or what I write, they can say it to me face. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'll be glad of a decent bit of scandal for a change. I've heard nothing but that article on that. I'll be dreaming about Excuse it. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm just going up to fill our hot water bottles, love. If I were you, I'd try and get Len Fairclough off the premises. I don't like the moodies in at all. Well, I'll leave it to you. Uh, I think I'll make a night of it. Yeah, that's right, lad. Sleep it off. Uh, just off, Mrs. Longhurst. Oh, well, I were going, but uh, I think I'll stop and have another one mm. now. Shouldn't have thought you'd have had the neck to come in here, lad. Well, I've been told some people have got the wrong impression about my article. I came round so if I could try and clear that misunderstanding. Nobody got the wrong impression, mate. Now, listen, lad, I reckon we've all had about enough of this business. Why not tell them you're sorry? Say you didn't mean to hurt their feelings. I'm sure they'll be all right. Sorry, Mr. Walker. What for? Tell him the truth. Is this what you wrote? This in the paper? Well, that's just a few bits taken at random. If you really want to know what I'm trying to say, why don't you buy the magazine? Well, waste money on rubbish like that. Ah, come on, Lenin. Ignore him. Look, sir, what do you want us to do? Go and sit in the ice street all day. Look, if I want to come in here for a quiet game of darts, that's got nothing to do with you and anybody else. Do you get that? There's one little thing you don't seem to understand, Kenneth Barlow. That's the fact that Harry and me was, was scrapping for you during the war, you know, when you were still running around in little nappies. You know, rifles and bayonets and all that kind of stuff. Well, he wouldn't understand that, would he? We had no time to write articles, did we, Harry? Yeah, I suppose you'd just stand there and let them all come, wouldn't you? Oh, you'll I never understand. I suppose you'd blame me pacifist and all, aren't you? Never understand. It's not a question of that. Look, lad, just walk to that door. Will you do us a favour? Just walk to the door, turn left and keep going till you get to the council rubbish heap and then throw yourself on it. And take that with you ah, and all. There's no need to get heavy. Look, what I wrote... I'm not blaming anybody in particular. I blame everybody. I blame myself. I know people don't always like the truth. You're built up. You make me sick. Yeah, the truth's hard to take. I don't wonder it turns your stomach. Just watch it, mate. All Just right, watch then. it. Shock it. It's not worth it. Look, if there's one thing wrong with Coronation Street, it's because it sometimes throws up nasty, snivelly, little clever dicks like you. So built up home and get your daddy to change your nappy before you get out. Hey, 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 That's, that's just the kind of intelligent reaction I'd expect from a loud-mouthed, beer-swilling moron like you. Say that again. That's just the kind of... In don't move, Harry! Hey, stop that! Oh, I'm no fighting. Oh, hey, stop it, will you? Hey, stop it, will you? Harry, do something! Do something! Don't move! All right, oh. all right, that's it. Come on, come on, home you go. You've caught enough, don't you? Oh. 